Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to go ahead and continue with this Babylon 5 fan art piece. I'm thinking about this, and I actually need to have some of what I erased, which I hate. I hate having to redo stuff. But uh, let me go back to my brown layer and uh, go ahead and re-measure a few things. Now ultimately, when you're freehanding perspective this way, you're not going to get absolutes, but following at least some sort of rules will help you to be able to at least make sure that you're getting it within the ballpark. And as long as it's within the ballpark, you're good, okay? You don't have to really worry too much. If, if I were to just sift a few things, like with the lasso tool, just ever so slightly, that ballpark, since it's within the ballpark, you don't have to worry so much. But just as long as if that lasso tool movement winds up being just a minute change. But uh, if, if I wanted to select all of this stuff and move it to the other side of the canvas, everything, everything, Thing would have to be redrawn. There's there's no lasso tool that can fix that problem if I want to completely dramatically change the composition. Okay, so I found my ballpark here, and, and see, I'm even with it being inside of the ballpark, I'm able to find out where that ellipse came from. Let me go ahead and draw this out. Like, it's still lining up with my original ellipse that I drew out. I'm going to go back to my measurement layer, which is red, and uh, I'm going to redraw this uh, ellipse once again and that this is going to be able to help me because um, this ellipse that I'm drawing out here this little segment right here that's visible on my reference it's black and it's important to, to actually have the entire ellipse at least recorded in some way in my sketch this is the construction of everything that we need here so I'm going to erase the brown here and uh, I'm gonna start with the brown layer again and I'm gonna start doing some uh, measurements with it. Uh, well let me go into the purple and I did a bunch of measurement extensions here and I don't need that anymore. None of these are needed. All I'm keeping are the horizontal lines. The diagonal lines in order to find out where the horizontal lines need to be, that's all that I'm getting rid of with the purple layer. Alright, now that I have that, I'm on the brown layer and I'm just going to split this up into fourths. So in order to do that, I find center. Excellent. And now that I have center, I just go ahead and draw out center. And now that I have center found out I just find center of the left of center basically and that would be right here and I understand that to a newbie this looks like a bunch of weird uh, scribbles like highly methodical scribbles on the screen this will all start to make sense uh, as, as I continue further and you know, if, if you're a newbie and you just don't understand the logic that I'm going through, you might have to watch videos like this over and over and over and over again just to be able to understand what it is that I'm doing. And that's fine. That's fine if it takes you multiple times to, to watch the video uh, or uh, multiple times in order to understand what I'm doing here. And it's not just because I want views. Yes, I do want views. Uh, views are awesome. But what's important isn't the views. The, what, what's important is that you, you get some sort of equilibrium as to what it takes in order to understand the math. Now, why, why would I go through all of this trouble here with all of this math? Well, for, for example, there's there's one thing. Okay, so this right here, this little section here, if it wasn't for the math, I wouldn't know where this other section of it on the back is. And I wouldn't know how that angle needs to go around the, this portion of the ship. I, I found out that a lot from being able to work out the math here. It, little things, doing the math lets you know that this upper portion of the spine of Babylon 5 is going to be behind this whole portion. It gives you an understanding of the depth, the shape, the form. I'm not thinking about where my lines go. What I'm thinking about is kind of sculpting a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional surface. That's how I'm thinking. Okay, so that's the importance of, of 
why I'm doing everything the way I am. And I've already taught all of these techniques on my channel. Inside of the Teach Me to Draw series, uh, I cover a lot of measurement uh, techniques. Uh, I also teach a, a few of them, most of them, inside of uh, the Curvilinear Perspective playlist. However, inside of the Curvilinear Perspective playlist, I, I kind of spill the beans on them really quickly. I, I just tell you what they are real quick. And what I found is if you just tell people all of these amazing techniques all at once real quick, people take them for granted. They don't think of them as interesting. They don't they don't understand the value of them. And so they just kind of let that information go in one year and out the other. So instead of the Teach Me to Draw playlist, I made a point to emphasize just how important they are by creating multiple different videos all about it. Okay, so now I'm going to erase some of the brown here because I've created a number of horizontal lines going across the page or going across this uh, ob these objects here. And I'm just going to kind of straighten these out a little bit. It's okay if I kind of move them ever so slightly. Like I said, these are all kind of ballpark sort of measurements. And so I'm okay with being within the ballpark. All right, so I'm going back to the brown layer and I'm going to continue measuring one fourth out. Okay, and as I'm going further and further away towards the vanishing point, I'm trying to make sure that my lines get thinner and thinner. Primarily because the thicker my lines get, what happens is, you know, how are you going to start measuring? measuring things out here if all of your lines are going to start getting that thick. So it's important that, that you do that, but there does come a point where once I start drawing an X way back here, like it's, it's just a series of pixels. And so that's going to be an issue that I'm going to have to cross when I get there. I mean, it's already a series of pixels that barely make any sense uh, right with what I'm working on right now. So I'm just going to quickly draw the lines out that I've got measured, pull out my eraser, go to the brown layer, erase. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure center. Oops, I got to have the brown. All right, so I pull out that, go to the purple, draw out the horizontal, go to brown, pull out the eraser. All right, so now I'm going to do the measurement for the one-fourth mark here and so basically what I'm doing as I'm getting closer to the vanishing point is I'm just making it more simplistic for me so that I'm not having a lot of clutter on the screen where it's just going to be a bunch of pixels and so if if I'm trying to measure one-fourth the way that I normally do it it's just going to, to just be a mess on the page or, or at least a mess of pixels that I can't make heads or tails of. So I'm, I'm just kind of simplifying my process at this point. So here within this region right here, I need to find one fourth. So I'm going to start drawing two lines that make an X across that area, find center basically, pull out my purple, find center. Okay. Now, normally at this stage, when I'm close to the camera and not so close to the vanishing point, I would just draw out another X, but I can barely even see the central point. So I'm just going to instead erase that and remember where I am in the process of finding one fourth. I'm going to draw an X here and an X right here, pull out my purple layer, select purple, and there we have it. Okay. Okay. Pull out the eraser, pull out brown, erase, and now I have another little region here where I need to measure one fourth. So I find center, pull out purple, go to brown, select the color brown, and erase. All right, and so now I can just kind of draw out these two X's now. Pull out purple, all right, excellent. And so now I'm just kind of gonna eyeball the rest because it's just so far away, I can just eyeball it. And now I can just uh, erase. All right, so now I have these marks. Now what do these marks give me? Well, if I pull out my brown layer and I go ahead and draw out around this transparent gigantic like box I know that center is right here okay now that I have that I can now let me think about this let me pull out the teal color the teal layer and the teal color I can now just draw these lines that go to these horizontal lines that I've been working on okay go back to brown draw this box out okay awesome so now I can go back to teal select go like that booyah awesome maybe maybe the those square no I need to have these squares because if I if I just eyeball it if I just go like that and that I have no I let, let me just 
do a guess, okay? I'm just gonna go like that and that, okay? And in fact, I'm gonna do it with both of these, just really quick. All right, let me go to brown and see how accurate I was. Drawing out this square that goes around this transparent, gigantic box tells me where this is. This is a parallel line with this line. Okay, and so you can see how far off I was. Like this point right here does not match up with this point right here, okay? So it's important that you draw those out. So let me go back to my teal layer, pull out my eraser and erase this here. These little chicken pock lines, I guess, but they're measured out pretty well. All right, select the color teal and draw them towards the center spine, basically, of the jump gate. And so once again, you know, pull out the brown color. Now I, I can actually just keep going with this for a little while until uh, it gets to the point where there's a lot of overlap. Let me show you what I mean. Um, at this point, it's not important for me to keep switching to the different layers over and over again. But as I get closer and closer to the vanishing point, there's there's going to be a bunch of behaviors that I need to be careful of. But, okay, so now I'm hitting overlap at this point. Uh, you can see that this brown square that I'm creating just now on the screen, it, it's, it's overlapping. This is the overlap area, okay? Now, I can still make heads, or, heads and tails of what's going on on the screen but as I keep going closer and closer to the vanishing point you're going to notice that the overlap becomes more and more overbearing to the point to where I'm not going to be able to make heads or tails out of what's on the screen so I'm gonna to go to my teal layer and I'm just going to continue drawing from the spine out okay um, okay so I was able to manage to understand what I was looking at let me erase some of this brown off the screen okay now let me turn off the blue really quick the blue layer let me turn off the purple layer okay so here you see kind of something interesting going on here okay you see uh, something that's going on more like these spines to the jump gate a, a, a shape that I can work with in order to form the jump gate and so let me turn on these layers again this is the math that I, the, the, the purple and the blue layer. This is the math that I need in order to figure out where these little spokes, these little wings to the jump gate need to be. Uh, and it's important that, that I'm able to work with it. Okay, so let me go back to my brown layer. And the last one that I worked on was this one. So I'm going to continue. And yeah, it's, it's so close to the vanishing point. I need to keep transitioning now. So I'm just going to keep going to my teal layer, change colors to teal or green, and I'm just going to keep on trucking, just one at a time, and just make sure that I keep changing colors, uh, otherwise I, I, I start running into problems. Now see how much overlap I would have at this point? It would just be ridiculous. I wouldn't be able to make heads or tails out of any of it. So go back to my teal layer. Huh, I'm running into a, an issue here where this is going to share the same space. Okay, so, okay, go back to the brown layer, I guess, and that's more accurate, I feel. Let me go to the blue layer and just make an adjustment to this back line here uh, so that it, it winds up matching up with this corner just a bit. I, I'm not really influencing all of my established measurements that much. Um, I'm just trying to influence my new measurements so that they will uh, be a little bit more easily conforming. To, to what I need. Okay, you know what? It's getting so, it's getting to be such a, a mess and it's so far away. It's just a series of pixels at this point. And it's starting to kind of get ridiculous to, to keep this up with all of the math because no one's going to really notice what I'm, like, all this stuff all the way out here. Uh, trying to measure everything out perfectly. And if it's not perfectly measured out, no one's going to give a crap because it's just a series of pixels off in the distance. Uh, all, all anyone's going to see is nothing. They're not, I, I don't think anyone's going to notice any change, any of this. All right. So, excellent. Okay, so let me turn off the blue layer real quick and turn off the purple layer. All right, this is what we got. I think it looks good. And now I could go ahead and flesh this out at this point, but I don't really want to do that. And the reason why I don't really want to do that is primarily because I think I would wind up confusing the crap out of myself. Um, I think uh, what I need to do here though is draw a line or at least erase some of this uh, and draw 
draw this out like so and maybe erase a little bit right here so that I have at least a little bit of a, an understanding as to what's going on here. Let me erase a little bit. Let, let me turn on the uh, blue layer. Ah, right. Okay, that's what was throwing me off. Okay, I just needed to draw this line right here, like that, like so. Okay, so let me turn off the blue layer, and let me just clean up this line a little bit. It doesn't need to signify the end of the box anymore in green. Uh, not anymore. All right, so all of that just looks great. So if, if I were to flesh this out, I might forget that all of this other stuff that's on the, on the page, like this, this right here and this one right here, I might forget that I've been measuring these in fourths, the distances from, uh, let me turn on my purple layer, the distance from here to here is measured in one fourths, the distance from here to here is measured in one fourths. If I spend a whole ton of time working on this, fleshing it out, making it look like a perfect picture, I might forget how I've been measuring this out and everything might look staggered or, or it might look like this one has a bunch more of these little wings that stick out of the the spine of the jump gate than all of the others so rather than getting it to basically stop working for me correctly I'm gonna continue uh, measuring things out so I'm just going to at this point since I'm close to, to the camera I'm just going to go ahead and measure this out one fourth without erasing every single line I like how I was incrementally mentally uh, when I was uh, really close to the vanishing point. All right, that looks good. Let me switch on over to the next segment and measure one fourth. And, and notice how many times I need to redo the same thing over and over again. There's a lot of control Z. E, sometimes not nearly as much on pencil and paper, but there is still a lot of mistakes, a lot of a lot of thought going on here. Okay, excellent. Let me pull out the purple layer, and I'm just going to draw out these horizontal lines. Or at least, they, they actually start out coming right towards us, and then they become horizontal. They become more and more horizontal, because this is a panoramic image, and, and this allows me to do that. Uh, it may not be 360 degrees like I initially thought the image was going to be, but it's going to be good nonetheless. Okay, so now that I'm, I'm reaching a point to where uh, things are just kind of wonky. I'm just going to start erasing some of these brown lines uh, just because uh, they're they're just becoming a little bit of an inconvenience at this point. Uh, kind of an eyesore, which kind of gets it so that I'm, I'm distracted from actually seeing what I want to be able to see. Also, these the purple. I, I will need to have at some point uh, like these boxes that go around, but I don't need them now. I didn't anticipate that when I initially did that, but I think that I needed these initially in order to help me visualize the box. So, they, they serve their purpose for right now, but I don't need them anymore. I will redraw them again with the brown layer, but I, I yeah, they're just too much in the way at this point, uh, and, and they're becoming a frustration. And then look at how much overlap is going on here. There's overlap here, 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 here. Like, so if I measure these out into one-fourths, like, basically, there would be overlap all over the place. Um, so when I start drawing those V-shapes, like, like how I drew these V shapes, if I were to measure them all out close to the vanishing point, I won't. I wouldn't be able to make heads or tails of them because all of this will be overlap. Like when it's not measured out into fourths, we can see that there's there's already a, a lot of overlap. So just to make heads or tails of of what's going on, uh, this is how we're doing it. Excellent. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm going to continue with the brown layer, and I think that I might be able to actually measure this out fairly well still without erasing things incrementally. Awesome, that worked out pretty well, but I'm still going to switch over to the purple and draw out my one-fourth marks. Awesome. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the brown and erase what I've got there because it's an eyesore, it's a distraction that, that makes it so I can't pay attention to, to what I need to pay attention to. So I'm going to go ahead and find one fourth here, switch to purple, draw this horizontal line, go back to brown, erase, remember where I was. When you're working close to the vanishing point, it takes a lot of concentration. If, uh, if somebody goes over to you and says, hey, I need you to wash the dishes, you're not going to know where you left off, that sort of thing. So make sure that whenever you're working next to a vanishing point, that you don't have chores to do, that you're not going to have someone nagging at you or something like that. This takes concentration. This 
this is the artist's game of chess that I've been talking about. Being able to make heads and tails of what's going on. In fact, this whole process that I've been talking about, that I've been showing you guys here, has been what I call the, the artist's game of chess. Uh, let me press Control Z a few times. Okay, and press Control Y a few times. This is some of the beautiful part of working digitally. I'm able to see what my last few steps have been to know where I need to be. Uh, so now I can go ahead because I've uh, like I've been a little bit distracted with my narrative that I distracted myself from actually remembering where I needed to be. All right, cool. Or at least where I was in the picture. All right. So now I'm going to zoom in. Now we're getting to the point to where yeah, like measuring this out is going to be a, a pain in the butt. Let me go ahead and just do that. Purple. All right. And at this point, I'm going to go to the brown. Erase. Go to purple. And I'm just going to start eyeballing it. Okay. So there there should be one right here in the middle. Oh, it's just becoming a series of pixels. And then four, one, two, oops, two, three, I believe. I think it's three. So if I go like this, one, two, three. Yes, it's going to be three lines in the middle. So let's see. Yeah. One, two, three, one, two. Well, it's just at this point, it just doesn't matter. It's just, it's just nonsense. So I'm going to zoom out, pull out my brown layer, and I'm going to start drawing out the box that I did on the upper spine of the jump gate okay so there's the first box second box third box there's already overlap here you can actually already see it right here see that it's crazy and now it's getting to be a larger overlap than over here see that all right well we're gonna keep going though I'm confident that I'll be able to understand what I'm doing here or at least what I'm looking at at least at this stage of, of where I'm what I'm doing okay we've reached a point where this bottom blue line is no longer making sense with what I've drawn out. So I'm going to go to the blue and I haven't really done too much measuring all the way out here with this bottom blue line. So I'm just going to adjust it ever so slightly and erase what I don't need from it. Just the, the, the thing that I feel is incorrect and fill in the gaps just a little bit more, make that line just a little bit stronger so that I can make heads or t heads and tails of what I'm doing. So with this brown box, it doesn't quite align up perfectly with, with this corner, but I'm going to forgive it for now because I'm confident that the other brown squares that I'm drawing out are going to make sense. Okay, now it's starting to become a little bit of a nightmare. Let me go with to my teal layer, pull out green and just draw out the V shape that I need. Okay, excellent. Let me go to the brown layer and this will become less of an eyesore now. Just erase the brown that I've been doing and now select the brown color and onward. I'm making a few minor corrections to some of these lines, these purple lines, because uh, they, they're not lining up very well, but it's freehand drawing and you can expect little things like this to happen. Let me just draw these out with a little bit of a thinner line because there's so much over Overlap, I can picture me having trouble later on making heads and tails of what's going on here. Let me turn off the purple and the blue layer. Eh, I don't know. I don't I don't know. Maybe I might have trouble understanding what's going on there. But but you can see that I'm creating this spine and the geometry is wrapping around this point of view uh, quite well uh, for curvilinear perspective or fisheye perspective, whichever term you like. Curvilinear perspective is the proper term, by the way. But uh, yeah, uh, let me go back to my teal layer real quick. And this right here, this is something that I did at the tail end. I just need to make the V shape right right there. All right. At this point, I think I'm just going to eyeball it. And when I flesh this out, I'm not really quite sure what I'm going to do, but it looks good. It's fine. Uh, I think that when I ink it, that's when the main solution to this problem that's going on here, uh, the, the complexity of, of what's going on here, will get resolved. That's what I think when I ink it. Awesome. Okay. That is all that I need there. And this here I think I can just uh, draw some going like that and the rest of it's covered up by the jump gate itself which is this right here the actual opening of the jump gate okay the rest of this in blue is going to be covered up so if I press ctrl z a few times like you can see that's all that's relevant and I'm just going to eyeball that stuff 
So let's go into the purple. Now there's so much foreshortening going on here that when I go ahead and start measuring in fourths, it's going to be really difficult to, to actually do that. So I'm going to just take it incrementally as if I was close to the vanishing point. Okay, so go to purple and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line across and up. And then I'm gonna get this existing horizontal line and just go straight up. And and I'm, I think I'm actually just going to eyeball what's in the center of these two in order to find out where one fourth is. In fact, I'm going to need to clean up these lines just a little bit in order to make sure that this makes sense uh, as I start fleshing it out. Okay, go back to the brown layer, find center right there, pull out purple, draw a line all the way across and up. In fact, I can go ahead and erase this previous horizontal line, okay, and draw this center that I just found straight up and I'm just going to find the one fourth mark just by eyeballing it and then draw the existing horizontal purple line and draw that up. Ah, it is getting very difficult to see what I'm doing. Okay, now I can go ahead and erase this horizontal purple line. No, I can't. Control Z, pull out the brown layer, find center right here. Now I can go to the purple layer, erase this one, draw a horizontal line from center, and there we have it. And, you know, this is starting to get to be such a mess. I don't think it even matters. I'm just going to erase and just uh, pull out my brush and start drawing a bunch of vertical lines across here and I think that's good. That, that'll be all that I will need. I'm gonna go to the teal layer and I will erase some of this green right here because I don't need that horizontal green line there at center anymore. I can just use it right here. Okay. I'm gonna, just because I'm so close to the camera, I need to at least do a little bit of measurement uh, here and there at this point. So I'm gonna use the brown layer just a little bit incrementally. Ugh, I need to erase these measurement X's that I did at the bottom. Okay. You know what? There's a brighter green that I was using using initially, and I think I'm going to use that for the lines that are mostly in the foreground. Or, or I might just alternate between the two greens, the dark green and, and the light green. I'll see how well that works out. So I'm gonna pull out the brown layer, and I'm done with the first purple line, and just so on and so forth. This is uh, actually really difficult and very time consuming. Okay, so this is starting to get so convoluted. I'm going to go to my purple layer and I'm going to erase some of these purple vertical lines that I don't need anymore. Just because uh, I, I've already run into issues where I've confused one of these vertical lines for the other already. And that's that's not that's not good. It's, it's something that could really throw me off. So it's just one extra step in order to make sure that everything's carefully done. But, you know, it's starting to get to the point where I don't think it even matters. Um, let me go to dark green, light green, dark green, light green, and it's just a mess. I'm just going to, like, since uh, this region right within here, since all of that has already gone within the fold here, there's overlap. This since we're kind of looking up at this specific spine here, I'm not ever going to need to draw this upper section anymore. So I'm just going to start drawing these lower areas out like that, okay? And it's all eyeballed at this point. Like, I, I didn't really care if I was matching up to measurements and stuff. This, this one was just generally a very difficult one to work on. So I'm just going to erase all of that, uh, turn off my purple and blue layer, and you can see what I've created. Now, this is now much closer to the framework that I need to work on. So I'll go ahead and get on to it. So the spine, I want to look at the spine here. Okay, so it looks like this is almost like a chain. So it starts out with the top being a shape kind of like this. Okay, so it looks like there's a face like this, and then a diagonal face going downward, and then a diagonal face going horizontally, and then another diagonal face kind of going horizontally, kind of it has some thickness to it, so I need to draw out the thickness. I'm just drawing out a prototype of kind of what I need at this point, just so that I understand the shape of things. And then it looks like there's a beam that goes across the top, and then it goes down into this little junction area. 
and the same thing happens on the bottom and then it joins that junction area and then two more that wind up kind of joining into that of course this is all kind of sketchy not very formally drawn and then inside of this there is a light and this exists in between each and every single one of these wings so there would be a wing here like that and then a wing right here like that okay so I'm just studying this and then it would repeat the same process then segment out into four directions form into another one there'd be a light inside of here and then another set of wings like that okay I'm happy with my prototype my prototype is basically me just drawing something without a sketch or anything uh, not really caring whether or not this looks perfect or not but this this stuff needs to look perfect. So I'm gonna actually start right here, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna end the live commentary. And by that, what I mean is, uh, so far, everything that you've been hearing is a new approach towards editing uh, videos that I'm trying out, where I'm just talking while I'm drawing the picture. And I'm trying to cue you guys in on each and every single step. And uh, I think there's some benefits and some drawbacks to it. Um, some, of the, some of the benefits is you guys are cued in on every step of the way, but I'm not even quite... Like, unless you're actually thinking my thoughts, uh, there, there is a language barrier where I can only communicate so many ideas at once in a short period of time. Uh, so if I say, this is horizontal, this is vertical, and you don't see it, if, if it doesn't communicate that visually to you, I, I don't know if that's ever going to be able to communicate anything to you. Uh, but li like I said, if, if it helps you to watch these videos uh, over and over and over again in order for you to start absorbing it and understanding it uh, every step of the way, then feel free to continue, like to re-watch as many times as you feel is necessary to help you get better at drawing your backgrounds and drawing in perspective and such. Uh, but, there are, again, there are also draw other drawbacks to editing this way. I, uh, I want, This is just three hours worth of footage. Uh, the last video in this video. Three hours worth of footage. So, where, while in my previous videos that I've been doing throughout the whole course of my channel, I've been able to nearly finish uh, or completely finish a picture every single video. Uh, whereas this is something that's like, well, I'm not able to include uh, 8, 12, you know, 30 hours worth of material <laughs> all in one video. Uh, so what, like, I don't know. So it's, it, be, and some of the reason is because like, I, what happens is I edit down all of the audio so that it takes up as little time as humanly possible. And by that, I mean this video that you're watching right here right now is 42 minutes and 56 seconds. So, I don't know, a little less than three hours, I don't know, two hours, I'd say, uh, reduced down to 42 minutes. Um, I'd say that's not bad. And, and so this means that every 10 seconds of me editing, I have to time lapse it to match what I'm saying at any given moment in time. And that's extremely difficult and extremely time consuming. So if you guys like this way of me conveying information and, and teaching, then make sure that you leave a comment in the video description below because I don't think I'll be doing this for very much longer if I can like if if I don't get any feedback whatsoever. If you like this, make sure you give feedback. Okay? Um because I, I like finishing my pictures. I, I like spending more time drawing the picture than I do editing. Okay, I think I'm a much better artist than I am an editor. I think that's abundantly, obviously clear. Just if anyone's seen my channel. So just to describe what's going on on the screen right here, the purple lines uh, that are going uh, horizontally towards the vanishing point, okay? Uh, to the vanishing point to the right, okay? It's not, the vanishing point isn't actually on the screen. It's a uh, little further up, upright off screen, okay? <clears throat> um, but 
the, the purple lines signify verticals, the vertical links in the chain or spine of the jump gate, okay? And, and yes, there are some purple vertical lines, but that signifies the beginning and the end of each link in the chain, okay? And then the red lines, they're exactly the same as the purple lines, however, they're horizontal. Yes, they're still going to that same vanishing point, uh, because they they have to match and so that's the ultimate thought there thought process there now fortunately I have two sketch layers at some point down the line uh, when I finished up drawing the Excalibur I needed to draw the earth uh, you know battle cruiser the Agamemnon right and the Agamemnon is is experiencing overlap with the Excalibur. The Excalibur is in front of the Agamemnon. So what I needed to do is I needed to actually just place the Agamemnon on its own layer. And this allows me to use my second sketch layer right here, right now on the screen, what you're seeing right here. Uh, all of my horizontal links in this chain or in the spine here. Uh, this is uh, what I, how I did it. Uh, you can see that the first sketch layer, I lowered its opacity so that I can still see what I was doing and make sure that I match up everything just fine. Uh, and, and I think it, I, th I think the the chain looks fine. It's just the only thing that I'm kind of disappointed about with this final sketch is just how how long the wings are. The the wings are. They, they, they're just these little bitty tiny little things that don't really look right trying to gauge your um, your uh, proportions trying to gauge your proportions when you draw in perspective is, ex is sometimes really difficult now I suppose I could have just drawn out a, a box for the spine and drawn out you know the the spine but in the end, in order for me to make those wings, it would have been the exact same workflow. But even still, I think having uh, an actual point of reference uh, with regards to seeing how thick this spine is would have still helped me out immensely. Uh, and I didn't do that. And that's unfortunate. I, I really should have done that when I was working on the this this whole process but it's I think it's still salvageable I think it's still something that I can solve um, and I'll kind of walk you guys through on some of the uh, hypotheses that I have going running on in my head in order for me to try to resolve the problem uh, I you know if, if one technique doesn't work then some other technique will and that's, you know, I've included my mistakes throughout the process of me drawing this. And everything that you see me doing on the screen right now, it's, it's some derivative, most of the time, of, of everything that I've been showing you guys. Per drawing in perspective is extremely repetitive. But like I said, it, it is a kind of like a game of chess. Because you have to think in a particular type of logic in order for you to get things to work out f just right. And uh, yeah, you see me, I drew out the red and purple lines once again. The purple lines signif signify vertical and the red lines signify horizontal. And I, I'm doing the exact same stuff that I did in, on the lower section. And to draw all of this stuff out, uh, each link in the chain, I was thinking about doing a lot of things really formally and such like that and trying to work out a sketch first and then, well not a sketch, but using some of my measurement layers to form a sketch and then using my sketch layer to, to in a way, ink over it even though the sketch is still just a sketch. I, I was thinking about going all that route and that would, nor that would work normally if I wasn't editing this way because like, the, the end goal was, hey, I need to finish this. Uh, I need to be able to edit all of this together uh, in a timely manner. And, you know, in the end, I, I decided that I, I would cut the live voiceover off prematurely. 
here you see me gradually getting more and more into Impressionism as it goes off towards the distance. And uh, I think that some of the Impressionistic stuff that I did there wound up looking better than most of the other stuff that I've done. I think that me working with all of these geometric shapes wasn't quite necessary. I think I could have kind of just maybe worked with some round rounded shapes and stuff like that almost almost like an ellipse and uh, just do that with each and every single one of the links in the chain it's just doing it 100% freehand without any any sort of you know measurements for the each ellipse and such I think I could have worked something like that out fairly well but I didn't and um, I'm, I'm not I'm not disappointed in, in any of it. I think it's all salvageable, so I'm not going to eat myself up too hard. Uh, I think the the one thing that was hard. Okay, actually, let me let me address this. So here I'm drawing out the wings, and I'm realizing for the very first time, wow, these wings are not up to proportion. And then once it goes off towards a vanishing point, I realized I'm not going to be able to see what's a wing and what's not. So I deleted my blue measurement layer uh, and started to use the blue color on my actual sketch layer. And uh, I think that worked out pretty well. Even The thing is, is even with all of these problems inside of the, the sketch that I'm seeing here with the proportions, uh, I still look at it and I see something that looks actually really good. It just, you know, it just needs a little bit of adjustment. That's all it needs. And uh, so, yeah, no no problem. Maybe about, I don't know, hopefully, hopefully less than 10 minutes worth of work in order to resolve the problem. That's what I'm thinking. This was the hardest one to work on right here uh, because it's so foreshortened. Uh, even when I started to do the measurements, you saw me trying to do things all formally and I really couldn't quite get it to work formally. And foreshortening kind of does that to you. Uh, you want it to be just like all the others, but you can't. And so things need to be eyeballed, things need to be just kind of uh, a little bit more lax. And you can see that I only formally drew out maybe about, yeah, about two links in the chain and then just went completely Im impressionistic. And then, uh, you know, same thing with the uh, with the wings to it. I think the proportions on the wings to that wound up looking a little bit better than all the others, but still. And I just kind of freehanded that off in the distance. So this is the final look for the image here. You can actually kind of see it throughout this course of time here. I'm kind of painting a few things a little bit impressionistically while the canvas is still white and all that good stuff. I think it's turning out pretty good. Anyways guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell or go ahead and follow me on Twitter. A link is supplied in the video description below. If you'd like to support my channel, there's a little end screen card over there in the upper right corner of the screen. If you click that, you can get to my Patreon. Any support is much appreciated. And thank you very much for your time.